Yeah, baby. Let's. Is that the first one, or did you say that, TJ? That was pretty good. I don't know. That was it's pretty close. Time it was, it's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> it Dude, was was I, there, like, a little delay bringing us onto the stream just now? I think so. I don't know. StreamYard is just doing its thing these days, I man. I never know. on fire, TJ. What's you that? I just think your computer's on fire is the issue. I know. I got Tommy's old one. <laughs> Bro, TJ's just, like, about to die. Like, we know it. We played a game night the other night. And TJ's like we were still like in game like dropping already, and TJ was just still like in the loading screen. In the Let me honest, game. didn't yeah. enjoy it at all because my computer was pissing me off how laggy it was. <laughs> Did not enjoy it. Hey, we enjoyed it though. We got to see how how terrible conditions are over there. <laughs> um, and also, I mean, I don't know. A lot of stuff's been buggy, dude. Even today at the video, like normally I can go ahead and get the link no problem, and for whatever reason it was going private on me, but. We're here. Link's up. We're all good to go. A few minutes late, but uh, we're showing up on this Monday. Shout out to everybody over there hanging out with us. This is F35 Live, our weekly live stream. We're here every Monday night from 9 p.m. Eastern to maybe 11, maybe 10. I don't know. We'll see what a night takes us over here. We're having some fun out here still. I don't know. I feel like this bull market has quickly turned into a bear, um, at least over on the Cardano side, maybe. But we'll, 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 chat. we'll chat about that, and I think maybe why the importance of you know, broadening your horizons a little bit outside of just the Cardano a little ecosystem can be uh, a breath of fresh air Absolutely. and how it can, can, can still grow from within um, by doing that. So we'll chat. If you guys uh, are new to the channel, uh, welcome. If you guys want to chat with us, it is subscriber mode only right now. So go ahead and hit that sub button, that little bell down there. You can go ahead and chat with us tonight. Uh, if you guys are coming in from the Dang Ketsu uh, family or community, make sure to go ahead and hit that like button. Um, if you guys have never met us before, we're here every Monday night talking to your favorite NFT projects. Also run a podcast every Friday. So make sure to go ahead, hit that support button down there, and let's jump right into it. But first, before we do that, real quick to our everybody over in chat. I know we were a little behind over there. Shout out to Eddie Z showing up over there fellow content creator uh if you guys are into cornucopius content make sure to go check out his uh his stuff he's got a good podcast going right now with faux hubris lauren steiger what is up tommy how you doing there man a couple minutes left what up though <laughs> uh resin hello g f35 ma what is up curly Knox, rocking the nice cardano maxi biz uh pfp actually like that one a lot uh crypto hands ooh la la garfield is on you no ao just go tell him go tell him Go to, go, go to Lem. Go to Lem. Go to Lem. Tell him. <laughs> uh, what is up over there, D5 FOMO foe? And it uh, looks like, yeah, we only got a few people over in the chat. Let's get those numbers up, rookies. Let's pump them. Um, we've got, shoot, never mind. I was like reading Curly Knox's comment. This stalled me mid thought right there. <laughs> he said we were shadow banned. That's why. Uh, your, your, your PFP shadow banned. He's in the shadow realm right now. I was going to um, say, yeah. But beyond that, guys, let's go ahead and jump right into it. If you guys are, have been around for a while on our channel, you guys have seen this guest on multiple times. I think we've followed their journey since 2021, even when we first got started, um, all the way to here now. So let's welcome on a returning guest, big community member inside the Cardano community and Polygon community, and coming to a retailer near you. Welcome on, Zushan. How's it going, man? Hey, hey, how's it going? I like that intro, guys. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to nail it tonight so far. Hey, we're coming back. Coming up fresh. It's Monday night, baby. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> how's it going, Zushan? How you been? Good, good. Can't complain. It's been hectic, busy, but uh, mm -hmm. worth it. Uh, I was sort of telling you guys this before this as well. I finally got to take like a couple of days off over the weekend, which was nice. Uh, mm -hmm. Much needed as well uh but it's always good to be on the show uh for anyone from the dank fam that does not uh subscribe uh to freedom 35ers get on it make it happen give them a follow on twitter subscribe on youtube leave some there comments you make it happen make it rain uh maybe we'll you know uh maybe if you do enough of this uh maybe somehow you'll get a free bobo or shroomy so hey uh, hey uh, uh when when they're out so who knows right it's worth it uh <laughs> but yeah guys good to be here always a pleasure and uh i like the i like the sentiment you know maybe yeah. it's uh it's always good to explore and broaden your horizons right absolutely um, one year since we announced polygon mm -hmm. uh and you know we we're saying start broadening your horizons early baby <laughs> yeah yeah 
<laughs> it's crazy that's been a year, dude. Because I remember having you guys on during that time, and everybody was like, probably gone. You know, everybody was just like, oh, you know, you guys are leaving Cardano, that whole thing. And this whole past year, you've seen so many different things uh, embrace, like change, go cross chain. Uh, ordinals are a huge thing right now. Um, and then it just feels like, like you need to be doing that in order to grow. Because if you haven't noticed over here on Cardano right now, our volume's low, man. Uh, and it's not, it's other people are just looking elsewhere. Maybe they're a little bored. Maybe they're sick of the drama. Maybe they're just like, Hey, my numbers didn't go up. So I'm, I'm abandoning ship or maybe they're just kind of sitting dormant right now, but it definitely feels like you do need to, to kind of branch out a little bit. Cause I feel like even when we got started in crypto, when we first did our thing, like we weren't like chain agnostic to anything we did. We were definitely, you know, spreading around just, Hey, we, there's liquidity here. Hey, there's hype here. Let's go figure it out. Let's go explore. Let's figure out how we can get on that chain. And even to this day, like, you know, we maybe lost that a little bit because we got so hyper focused on what we do. And it's a good reminder sometimes to get back into it. And it's like, hey, there's other stuff going on out here, like explore, you know, um, it, it's it's great for other people to go ahead. And you might you might learn some stuff and be able to take that back here uh, or at least have some constructive uh, criticism. I've definitely seen that over on the timeline lately. But yeah, man, a big shout out to you guys for, for making that recognizing that making that switch early. Uh, how has it been over the last year for you guys uh, making that switch over to Polygon? Yeah, yeah, it's been it's been good, mate. Um, I mean, I can't complain. It's it's uh, definitely opened. You know, there's there's two. This is how I'd, I'd frame it, right? There's two ways to engage NFT collectors from other chains that you're not on. One is you and or your community sends nfts over to kols on solana and ethereum and they do a tweet and you get a bunch of hype mm -hmm. the second is you have something like phantom wallet uh where if you're already on ethereum you can just be on polygon or be on solana you're on yep. essentially all three so we legitimately and it's it's so interesting to me right uh and maybe that's why i've gone on to launch or launching soon uh a wallet as well uh but you know what's been baffling or rather not not baffling but a, a little bit uh, surprising to me is that we've literally got like ETH whales who hold you know five or six hundred denketsu between eight or nine of them on polygon mm -hmm. yeah and they won't touch the cardano side of it yeah. um and they and 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 to add a further caveat there it's like most of them it's their first ever mint and only mint to date on polygon mm -hmm. so they were willing to come over to polygon to mint these nfts but they wouldn't onto cardano because they were like new wallet i don't know the ecosystem i don't know how to easily get uh onboarded blah 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 uh but yeah. that's where i plug in you know uh the tokyo wallet that we're building uh which is mm -hmm. coming soon but uh yeah, yeah like, <laughs> I, like, go. I like the plugs <laughs> the casual <laughs> subtle ones <laughs> but shout out to you guys though because you were the reason why i even have a phantom wallet i still have my dan kesu from a year ago and you're the reason why i checked out other chains like polygon and solana now too that i've been playing and dabbling with because you got me hooked on the, the phantom wall which is very smooth by the way for that mint last year Oh, 100 percent. I think PJ was asking, he's like, hey, did you get like an airdrop of some coin? I don't know if it's from my dang Ketsu or not, but it, like you said, it opened the door again for maybe on the NFT side of things where it's like, OK, I like I support this collection on Cardano. I've seen you guys grow. You had a mint over here. We like the artwork. We wanted to get a piece of it and we made a wallet just to go ahead and support. And then from there, that opened that go like that door, that gateway to be like, all right, what else is over here? Or, hey, I already got the wallet. Might as well go take a look at what else they're doing over there. And that opens yep. other opportunities. And dude, it's it's the it's stepping stone really um from both sides too right because you could always be like oh hey you know dan ketsu i like that a lot where'd you where did that come from oh i came on cardano here's how to set that up right vice versa um have you guys been getting the back and forth before i know obviously we're going to talk about the toy deal that's the the huge thing going on right now but like the bridge between uh both chains like have you guys got a lot of interest from like some people who are like who discovered you guys from the polygon side or who and maybe not a lot but if anything like hey like i can help you guys move back and forth there What's that dynamic like? Yeah, yeah. So we've had about like a hundred, a hundred and ten first-time users come on to Cardano. Nice. Okay. Um, so it's been pretty solid. Uh, and uh, yeah, the token drop were all Denketsu. Mm -hmm. So basically, like the token meta on Polygon has been 
uh, if you hold like one of the top collections there, they just airdrop you. Uh, because you know, when you, when yeah. you're airdropping token to 20,000 wallets on Polygon, it costs you like 20 bucks. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's, it's filthy cheap. Wow. Uh, so I, I remember, uh, you would have got the gone token, some other tokens. There should be another one coming. I, I think it was gone. DeFi FOMO mm -hmm. folks said yeah. it. I think that was the token back in the day. Uh, yeah, 100 percent was, I believe. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So gone was some good money. Like at its peak, like it was a pretty nice pump. Yeah, and, free, and... free hundred bucks for me, honestly. <laughs> I was like, oh sweet, I'll swap this shit right now. Like done, easy. <laughs> easy. I don't know what it's from. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that um, no. I did also see uh, De DeFi Mofo as I just clicked it open. Uh, say, is it possible to make a UTXO wallet? Keep an eye out for Tokyo. Um, mm. We are going to be cross chain, but that's not what I'm here for. So sorry. What else we can get out of them? Yeah. <laughs> that's going to be a game changer. Uh, um, but but um, no, look, oh, coming, coming back to what you said, I, I think it's been. Uh, really, really good on both ends. Obviously, from the Cardano front, it's been really good for our community because they started exploring the ones that hadn't. They started exploring other chains like a year ago, right? right. Uh, so now when the whole Soul, coin, uh, Soul meme coin meta came around, a lot of them were like, well, I already have my Soul wallet on Phantom. Uh, blah 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 uh you know so it was really good in that sense um and i think it's the community likes it it's been good exposure for us we get a lot of like we have mods who are now who came from polygon and are now mods in cardano projects mm -hmm. and they didn't even know that cardano had nfts anything of that sort right like I legitimately yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so it's it's been a win uh on all the different layers 100 percent. i love that though man i go ahead tom or, or sorry i heard somebody about to talk on me Give i was gonna say if anything i think if cardano is gonna succeed they have to kind of be willing to you know branch out a little bit because we can't keep being so focused just on the one chain of cardano we need to kind of branch out a little bit and kind of bring people or onboard people over to here by you know having a project that's on polygon and cardano as well just to kind of broaden your horizons a little bit just to kind of see what's on the other side just to kind of see what the community's like it's a different it's a different uh, animal with all on different blockchains honestly i'm learning that with solano right now solano, solano. And, solano. <laughs> I was gonna say, it's a great example just because it is so still in that that wild west phase yeah it's a, it it's a little like is. it's a flavor for everybody right like it's it the casino over there right now in a sense and it's but there's a lot of opportunity right and as people chase that they that's chase what gets the people hype. in early too is that kind yeah. of money like that kind of attention where it's like hey man i got this and 20 minutes later it was worth this and people are like oh shit wait man just wait a second i get how do you make this wallet um at least early on you know you could get a lot of people interested and then they stay hopefully um or you know that percentage stays afterwards I mean, that's what we originally got in on when Tommy was like, I just sold a tree for twelve hundred dollars. And we're like, wait a second, can you what's that? what is it called? A wallet? Yeah. <laughs> and, that, and that's how these bull markets start, right? You know, there's that mass liquidity comes in, there's big interest from retail, and everybody's like, All right, how do I make one of these? And after they make their profits, do whatever it is, right? It eventually filters back into the NMT uh market. But the ones that like you guys over here that have been around for a while, like, you know, when people th talk about crypto punks, they, you know, crypto punks didn't mint that year in 2021 when everything took off, right? They were minted four years before that. So there was an established community. There was there was reason um, to be there, to know about them. And to, the, when they had stuff they were doing. So the fact that you guys are in that kind of same boat of like, hey, we've been around here since 2021. We've seen this, uh, you know, from the highs to the lows, we've been through it all. And here we are on different chains. We're not just, like you said, we're not chain agnostic. Our brand is is growing beyond, you know, to dip multiple blockchains. And now like we're about to talk about, uh, maybe to your, to your local store down the street, which is another way if you, you know, take away the blockchains, it's a great way to go ahead and get people interested um, and, or noticed out there in the right web 2 world so i feel like let's go ahead and transition to that right like bring it in to the toy deal like it's a huge huge news over here man and big congrats to you guys for uh finally getting to share this but 
You announced a toy deal over here in partnership with J Corp, which uh, I didn't know, but North America's largest apparel and toy licensor over here. You got two characters, which we'll talk about here, Bobo and Shroomy, um, and they're going to become plushies. Uh, can you kind of maybe walk us through, like, how did this happen and what does this mean for Danketsu, like, on an overview? And when can we get one? <laughs> That's That's <laughs> um, firstly, can you guys hear me okay? I, I was kind yeah. of yeah. lagging there for a sec. Okay. Uh, yeah, perfect. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been a long uh, time in the works. So we started having conversations back in late October, early November. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, I think the key thing for me was I spent the better part of like four and a half months uh, mm -hmm. in just working out of the Middle East. So I went to the Cardano Summit in Dubai. I was in Doha, in Bahrain, in Saudi. And man, the crypto scene there is popping, right? Like it's yeah. just insane. And the amount of networks and connections that i built and and the relationships and who one thing led to another and we ended up at this point right and i think the key thing here was what we first had to establish and the first thing that got them was not obviously it wasn't oh you have mental volume oh you have crazy socials uh or anything of that sort it was you have ip that you've tested and sold with the sample community yeah. and like a sample audience and you've done it successfully yeah right so mm -hmm. that was the key play more than anything else so you have these comics books you've sold at comic con you have these uh this merch and you sold a bunch of this like ada ninjas merch back in the day um you have community that's engaged with, you know, writing fan fiction, writing comics, writing songs with you. You have a million streams on your music, blah, blah, blah. So it works, right? So that's why we want to work with you. Uh, and because end of the day, your Walmarts or your Costco, they don't care if you've done $50 million in, in, in secondary volume, right? Yeah. Um, they care about the IP you have, and if it can, it's been tested within, uh, you know, a sample group or a sample community. And that kind of aligned really well, because that's what we've been doing for two and a half years, right? So yeah. uh, now I kind of get that reassurance that, yeah, now it's, you know, one of the, uh, it's, 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 IP is one of the metas in NFTs now. Uh, obviously, with like, you know, Luca Nets getting onto Forbes and all the other stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. We've been doing that forever, right? So, uh, um, essentially, uh, my son's just jumped in. Yeah, buddy. How, how'd you open the door? <laughs> uh, I, I think he really enjoyed the, the pre stream video with you with you guys yeah uh, oh, just give me one second you should buddy. hang out yeah 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 you better run <laughs> oh. Yeah. oh he's all good he just wanted to come say hi say what's up yeah. guys it's monday night <laughs> you guys yeah. talking about toys obviously yeah 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 exactly. daddy, what are you talking about the talking toys yeah, okay, okay. Toys? <laughs> where is my plushy dad <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. Uh, he, he's got a pudgy he has a pudgy um Cause you get you get pudgies here now actually sorry do you guys have them okay yeah um you you get the pudgies at, at like the local retailers here too in australia mm -hmm. um but yeah look circling back that's where the conversation kind of took off from and then it sort of evolved into what do we want to do do we want to yeah. take adan who's in the picture right here who's our protagonist and make like a figurine out of that that you can put in like a specialty comic store uh, where someone can come in and buy one of these for like 85 bucks uh, and and you know make it super fancy and expensive or do we want to go with cheaper mass retail something that's accessible and approachable by everybody and that's how we interestingly enough had the mascot um, 
competition like only a week or so before this whole mm -hmm. thing kind of kicked off so we're like wow we know just the characters right um yeah. and i mean bobo epitomizes web3 uh integration uh into sort of lore and storytelling and and how bobo came to be uh is is such an incredible story uh i don't know if you guys actually know about it but i'm happy to quickly kind of share say, it you. quickly do it yeah yeah the viewers definitely yeah, for the content yeah 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 so um you know we have a we have like one of our ogs and and he's like in the medical field and he has a he had a patient um in 2021 november or december like a month or two after we minted um and he was he asked her to knit like commissioned a knitted doll mm. uh and that doll was bobo turned out to be bobo and then the community voted on a name the winning vote uh yeah yeah exactly the, cool. the winning vote uh was by a guy who picked the name bobo so he then got the doll uh he then brought the doll to the first cnft con uh yeah. the bobo went on to feature as a character within our nfts and then bobo became our mascot and now bobo will be a toy and soon you know we'd love to get bobo into walmart so it's a pretty crazy story you don't come across a lot of that um outside of you know the web3 space right and I, in fact i would say i don't know very many projects where a community member created a character that went on to become the mascot of the whole project no, those yeah. series of events is wild. I love it, though. That's a cool story, honestly. Let, let alone, too, the fact that they'll be actually turned in mass produced uh, for retail to get a chance. Yep. To, I could imagine the person who, like, you know, it's, it did that. It's sitting there looking at it like it's kind of surreal to them, right? Uh, like, I, wow, that what I turned into that is now turned into this. And you guys have been able to market it that way. But it's also a great, like, part of your story, right? Like, it's community driven. It's like the power of NFTs. And it's not just one singular uh, like entity controlling everything. Like the community has so much input. I think that's super cool for you guys. Well, it's much more um, organic, and people are connected mm -hmm. to it that way. It's not just like, hey, we're going to force this down your throats. So yeah. I, and I got to ask too over here because you had Bobo versus Shroomy, but Shroomy also is uh, in that announcement as well, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So look, when it came to determining, you know, what sort of plushies we should be going for, uh, it was very much about a couple of things right one was bobo is definitely a sort of more boy focused or like a young boy uh toy where shroomy's kind of palatable for both girls and boys mm -hmm. uh and we kind of had to make that decision right and we thought unlike pudgy penguins we have the advantage of using lots and lots of different ip uh yeah. and lots and lots of different characters it's not just penguins so mm -hmm. why not take advantage of that why not shake it up mm -hmm. um so that's essentially why we went for shroomy and to be very honest i think it was a great decision because uh people we're seeing a lot of people who don't know about like bobo's history and especially new people just going like i need shroomy uh yeah. i'm gonna buy i'm gonna buy shroomy and shroomy is an interesting one because on the one hand the uh it's like super cool for kids but then you've also got like like you know you could see it becoming a part of like a shroom head subculture thing as a mm -hmm. final toy uh because we we have that in like kind of in the plans and pipeline as well uh but you know just the cool like more mature version of shroomy that's that's available for a certain niche within the market yeah no i can 100 mm -hmm. see that i think the like, people who know you guys right originally starting as ada ninjas branding to danketsu this probably resonates more with like them if they know your story early on right um ties to that and then like the shroomy aspect of that maybe people who weren't in it like maybe like even me i don't really know too much of the backstory behind shroomy other than like what we just saw uh, as far as like create a mascot and how that ties into like the future part of Danketsu as well. Although you got as part of your characters and these characters are both on the Polygon blockchain, right? As traits at the moment. 
No, so uh, Bobo actually first featured in the Atsuko collection in February really? 22. Okay. And Shumi first showed up in Daisuke in May 22. Really? Uh, the very oh. first kind of iteration. So if you go into like filtering and put Bobo in, uh, Bobo will pop up. Uh, I did not know. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shoulder. And okay. I so this really. was the first version of it. Uh, by the way, these are getting a complete stick art upgrade soon uh, when we're migrating them to another chain, which is not going to be Polygon, actually. Oh, um, right. But uh, yeah, mm. so... And then Shroomy looked very different, and you might even have to type Mushroom, to be honest. Like, it might not even... Uh, like oh yeah, i got you okay in the palm yeah yeah and then obviously um we brought victor in and we started thinking of like how to expand some of these characters with the fourth collection uh when we did the art upgrade and uh that's where we kind of you know really start expanding on them mm -hmm. uh so shroomy is really cool in that he goes uh from a simplistic mushroom here to a much more humanoid mushroom by the yeah. time that Shroomy got to the Polygon collection. Mm -hmm. So they all feature in the fourth and the Polygon collection and then Bobo's with Atsuko, Shroomy's with Daisuke. However, yeah. Polygon has a Shroomy one of one. I did see that. Yeah. Um, and I'm pretty sure I know who owns that one of one right now. All right, everybody's, uh, yeah, yeah. He's, everybody's he's, favorite, he's... favorite mutant ape over there. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So AJ's got that one. Uh, AJ's got a few of our one of ones. Uh, does he? Is it yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it, yeah uh, uh, what's wow. the one of one? Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah, that one. And what's what's he listed it for? Like he's got oh two and a half million. <laughs> That's price, right? <laughs> That's actually funny. IP, right? <laughs> That's classic, AJ. Hey, guys, check out this cool NFT I bought. Buy it for $2 million. Uh, <laughs> classic. Uh, but no, that's, I, I did remember seeing that, though, him post that not too long ago over here. I love that. So, so you've got the one of one, which I mean, that was, like you said, that's a big evolution from what we just saw over on the Dice Game in. Um, and isn't there other traits as well, like the hand trait, I believe? Um, that's over there yeah. as well. You're not going to find them for cheap. Oh, are you not? No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> uh, hey, nobody oh, just oh, you got one. I just pulled the trigger. It was listed for 300 Matic. Just, that was the only uh, one I, <laughs> I just snagged it. <laughs> you just got it? I just bought it. Oh, I love that. That's uh, funny. I, yeah. tagged, oh, I, tagged, oh, I was go. like, I pulled a little sneak. Cause yeah, look at the floor after that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god dude i just, I just pulled a sneak i was just i was just browsing i was curious while i was sitting here looking um <laughs> i just went in and snuck one in i was like you know what why not <laughs> i have to ask though since i i uh, just curious about that is there a benefit for anybody holding any of these nfts that feature any of these uh traits on the whether either blockchain or any blockchain yeah um so also just before that they're slightly mm -hmm. cheaper maybe on the Daisuke collection, like four or 500 ADA. Uh, but there's only like a handful left anyway uh, on Cardano as well. There's definitely none in the fourth for both. Uh, people have, yeah, okay, fairly cheaper. Uh, ah, okay, a little alpha over here then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, like considering there's like quite a few, like a hundred or something, there, there aren't that many available. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, so look, um, you're right. So how we've decided to play it, right, is essentially we have to we have to understand how we could sort of connect the existing NFT holders and, and what they uh, can potentially get mm -hmm. and than the toy deal, right? So the integration between the physical stuff and then the NFTs. And we took a page out of the, the pudgy playbook in this, right? And, and sort of looked through like legal 
uh, shuffles or or like loopholes essentially. Right. On, uh, and the very fundamental thing around it was well, you give the IP rights to the holders. Mm. Um, and what essentially happens from there is you have commercial rights over all your NFTs. Mm -hmm. And if we are to use your NFT to make a toy to feature in a comic book, which is also alpha, uh, because we already have comic books featuring a lot of characters. If you mm -hmm. know which ones they are, um, you know, we've been having conversations on how to take this two or three steps forward after just the plushies, right? How do we get the comic books into comic book stores? How do we get um, like final figurines created, expand on the music, get the books into bookshops? Heck, these guys partner, like they are the licensors for Star Wars, Disney, wow. MLB, NASA, uh, Rick and Morty, Naruto, Dragon Ball Z. Uh, so when you're, when you're the sole licensor for all of these major brands in North America, mm -hmm. um, you know, showrunners, you know, production houses, these are things that they're talking to me about without me bringing up. So all of this kind of goes back for me personally to what we started out with in 2021 September saying, this is where we're going to go and we're getting there right now. Uh, and I think that, you know, this time last year, we kind of transcended or expanded from chain maximalism. Now we're kind of expanding from just Web3. Uh, and it opens a world of opportunity for us and a world of opportunity for our holders, which is sort of tying back into your uh, question there, mate, which is yeah. if you hold an NFT that becomes a plushie, that becomes a toy that features in a comic book, um, we will sign an exclusive license agreement with you and yeah. you will get a uh, piece of the royalties that we earn uh, until you hold that NFT. Okay. And okay. for wow. context, Pudgy Penguins has 30,000 assets. Yeah? So that's more than us. And right. they have... 17 toys, 17 NFTs that are penguins, yeah. and their floor is 12 Ethereum. Mm -hmm. So Sheesh. So you have more of a chance of buying a Dank, it featuring in more than just toys, because we're gonna work, we're working towards comics, mm -hmm. music, books, vinyls, plushies, uh, and then, you know, hopefully eventually a, a whole anime right and yeah. if you go into our atsuko manga and you open it up from the top there's like the five one of ones of atsuko that feature in there and they're prominent characters uh there are some side characters that also mm -hmm. feature in there um as uh you know just like community members nfts and stuff so there is way more opportunity uh to kind of get to this point right uh and what we're doing is are you, i don't know if you guys are familiar with like the overpass ip thing that pudgy penguins have done no not too familiar i i, mm -hmm. I was actually pulling up some of their stuff because it's interesting uh like their their story right i don't know if anybody like most people maybe uh Maybe they, you know, I'm sure they've heard of it if they're in the NFT space. But uh, no, yeah, if you want to enlighten us a little bit, because they were featured in Forbes recently too. Yeah, uh, and I can tell you this, that unlike like Luca, I haven't rugged any projects in the past, so. Uh, <laughs> well, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not at the luxury of earning Ethereum royalties. Uh, I'm on Cardano and Polygon, so we don't rely on uh secondary royalties uh, as a source of you know mass revenue yeah. <laughs> uh, so if i rug a project and i make a like some bank off the royalties 
on Cardano or Polygon, it's not really going to be much. Um, but <laughs> look, aside from that, this is the the vinyl that he has in his hands, right? Mm -hmm. uh, he's they've mostly they're mostly plushies. Um, they have a and and you know their original founder is Rob, right? And then he came and took over the project, yeah. and uh, he got to talking with the same guy who linked us up uh, on this front. And he was like, hey, mate, um, you know, uh, he probably didn't say mate. Um, but... <laughs> Works great for the story, like, though. Like, hey, dude, um, you know, like I just bought I just bought uh, Pudgy Penguins and I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with this. Do you have like some opportunity for me, man? Uh... That's pretty solid. That's pretty good. <laughs> now I can uh, understand what like, you're saying. Oh, I got, I got it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, just, I was just translating what I would, what I'd usually say, mate. You know, I keep it very, very uh, Aussie, but I just, I just thought I'd make it simple, a, a bit more simpler uh, for for you, for the Yanks, you know. Uh, <laughs> um, no, but in all seriousness, right? Look, I mean, you you give credit to them uh, for doing what they've been able to do. Um, because I don't think, very realistically, any uh, project outside of Ethereum, definitely not Cardano, could have yeah. ushered something of this nature, right? It's just not going to happen. Uh, yeah. But by this happening, it's opened up the doors to, I mean, us, right? right. Uh, mm -hmm. And the beauty of it with their overpass IP thing is it's very simple. Uh, you go on this overpass IP website, you connect your wallet, and it says, do you have an NFT to submit? You submit okay. an NFT uh, and they've got something like 20,000 NFTs or 15,000 NFTs submitted. Uh, and what are the chances that one of those is going to become a plushie or a vinyl? Like it's super low, right? Yeah. But there's conviction. There's definitely more conviction than on Cardano, um, where people have taken the floor up to like, 12 ETH on their main collection, 5 ETH on their uh, Little Pudgies collection. Like it's, they're all bigger numbers than our biggest NFT projects, right? Like yeah. huge numbers. And this is all on the hope that their NFT might become a toy. Right. Um, but what it does is it empowers the community and it empowers, in our case, the Dank fan right uh let's say you know you guys have like a like a few dozen thanks between the three of you over the course of like two and a half years um you let's say start sporting a dank now I'm, I'm not i'm not saying you do this it's just mm -hmm. <laughs> i mean it would be great if you did the it blueprint right? here's how it starts yeah 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, freedom 35ers, and then there's like a dank that just walks yeah. by. You know? uh, okay. And that's, that's, that's one of the ones that Sick. you hold. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's, let's say it's like the one that you guys feel is the most marketable, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then you submit it on our platform, on our IP platform, which will go up later, obviously. Uh, and we go, well, this is why we can see this one's already uh marketable it's been tested it's been tried we're doing the same thing that the big retail the retailers are doing mm -hmm. with us um so we pick the ones that people rep you know we've got like a few uh content creators who are sporting dank pfps mm -hmm. especially on the uh polygon side of things and yeah. you know people now recognize their nfts as them so if they yeah. were to yeah pitch those within the submission for a platform mm -hmm. um we go well this one makes a lot more sense to us uh right. so that's the process of it but then that's not to say like what it then instantly does right is bobo and shroomy are the first ever toys that you know we will uh hopefully see in walmart right or at the least in toys r us right um so if you're holding a dank that also has one of those two, uh, that automatically becomes a more marketable uh, right. NFT. Yeah. And that automatically becomes a more sought after NFT. I, I had conversations with 
everybody in the build up to this. Like I, I told you guys, um, uh, like before we went official with this, right? Uh, as mm -hmm. an announcement, because I, because mm -hmm. I wanted like your your thoughts and and your advice and all that. Nah, uh, someone said Toys R Us is out of business. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It's uh, I got one like like a couple of kilometers away. Yeah, actually, uh, yeah, I saw a few opening up again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh no no we didn't get any uh DeFi mofo yeah uh not really because i i guess like cardano people when omen came out still weren't as willing to go to another chain mm -hmm. uh and i don't think i don't think people care like that's the general conversation that i had with most like i talked to people i talked to people like jpeg store i talked to uh, I have a lot of conversations with like Cardano Whale in DMs. I talk to Cardano Foundation quite a bit, like Patrick Tobler, uh, like a whole bunch of people that I was kind of reaching out to, to like seek advice, uh, support, anything of that nature. People were like, I'll be honest with you, a lot of Cardano just won't understand this. Yeah. Uh, they're not going to get the fact until it actually happens. Uh, so. That's an interesting thing for me. And that's why I'm just like, well, I know my core community on Cardano is going to support. Uh, I know my friends on on Cardano are going to support. Mm -hmm. But I'm looking to Polygon. I'm looking to uh, ETH. I'm looking to Solana. You know, we're, we're going to be doing some uh, fun videos. Uh, and we're going to have a lot of Ethereum and Solana influencers doing those tweets uh, for us because we see that as the market that kind of understands this. Because right. if you look at it from a speculative point of view, very simply, right? What I the, the numbers I explain with Budgie Penguins, uh, thirty thousand assets, all thirty thousand can become toys. Uh, only seventeen have become toys so far, and your lowest floor on a collection is five ethereum yeah yeah wild yeah so we've got a long way to go um when we did the announcement we saw something like seven or eight thousand matic volume uh, right. that day i think cardano was like a few hundred ada uh mm -hmm. so from the get-go we just kind of been like i don't think you know it's not a tech thing so maybe it's not a cardano thing we shouldn't really like if the community gets it or appreciates it, they'll jump on. We know our core will because, like I said, right? It circle. It comes back to they've been doing this for a year now, being on other chains at least uh, since we went to Polygon. So they're pretty pumped about it. A lot of them ended up buying like Pudgies at like three or four ETH as well uh, last yeah. year. Like we got a few community members like that. That's awesome yeah 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 i got somebody sold one you know for like 17 when it went Good up to 18 that. each and i was Man. like bro uh God. i can't even tell you to put some of that into danks you hold like a few hundred yeah. <laughs> that's so crazy that's just the power though of like yeah. you see we're in such a small bubble like really when you really think about it and when you think even just consider the amount of people that you get access to when it comes to retail the millions potential billions of people that are out there um you see how quickly that speculation grows right that, it gets way too crazy and that's just part of like being in early for this stuff um, and i imagine for you guys too and i guess i guess trying to clear it up for me just kind of curious um so i see like high, like it's holding like the nft uh i guess in this case uh we'll take the one of one shroomy right um that holder of that nft has to submit that sign over the uh the agreement for the ip rights with you guys right now, does that mean that he is the only in control of the Shroomy one altogether, or does the people that uh, hold any of those traits are they, is it like filter down like through underneath that, or is it like sure. only that one I'm person, sure. or is like because I don't see like a Bobo one of one, right? Is there like how, how yes. does that work? Yeah, um, I will say yet on the Bobo okay. one of one front. There's something cooking uh, okay. very soon, uh, and it's All it's right. going to be a fun. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, look, so. The reason it can't trickle down is that makes us a security. Uh, oh. And, you know, we've got 450 
bobos across all our collections, right? Mm. Uh, we can't realistically sign 450 uh, license agreements. This is the loophole, right? Mm -hmm. I could do it the very shady way and just say, let's make it simple. Everyone who holds a dank NFT gets a split of the 10% or 15% of the total royalties that we make. And, mm -hmm. and we're all happy and we're good. But we're going to get um, buried for that if we get into Walmart because then you know uh then essentially everyone comes after us so um it doesn't work that way however that's not to say that there aren't other opportunities around linking some of these characters that become plushies because you know you're not Actually, you could have like an Adan plushie, but you're not going to get like some of the more aggressive characters as plushies. <laughs> It'll be more of the companions. Right. Um, still, that's cool. There are some avenues for things there that we're still understanding with our lawyers. Right. Um, and yeah, I don't want to say too much because then I might have to stick by it. But mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, uh, hey, look, I mean, we, we, we promise the real world uh, Danketsu on uh, September 21. It's it's happening. Uh, so I, I, I can I can say I've, I've, I've uh, delivered on almost everything that I've uh, promised in 21. Uh, pretty happy. Yeah, that's awesome. About that. It's not been easy. Uh, it's not been a smooth ride. I mean, you know, last time I was in like JPEG top 10 was uh, it's been a couple of years, but we're on Polygon top 10 a lot. Mm -hmm. um, people you know seem to resonate more with sort of the real world integration thing but it's also like nfts on cardano are just uh not not a thing at the moment right like we had the goofs mint such an awesome project <clears throat> and we did 190,000 ada in 24 hour volume um 30 day volume you guys you guys use crypto slam by the way have you I, ever used I, I, I no, I've not used it personally, but I know of it. Um, I've actually maybe we actually clicked it on at one point, but yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's really good because like um, you can go into it if you look at um, like blockchain rankings all time. Cardano's at like an impressive eight. We were f six. Uh, no, no, yeah, we were seven. Sorry, or six a year ago. Um, now Immutable just flipped Cardano. Polygon's been at like a comfortable uh, fifth, um, where they've almost done like the a double, double. So if you click on uh, at the at the top uh, next, uh, yeah, next to with the search bar, it says products, rankings, blockchain rankings, um, and then you go to all time. 24 hours is abysmal for Cardano. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Look at the number of wallets trading. 500 and 994 transactions uh, yeah. on the NFT front. And you compare that to, um, you know, Bitcoin, Solana. Heck, even compare it to like Avalanche, which yeah. is, uh, and, you know, they've had less buyers but more sellers uh, because of which significantly higher volume. So their floor prices are just higher. But you yeah. go to all time guys, and here's the crazy number, right? Ethereum, obviously 43% wash traded. That's crazy number, right? Yeah, but you look at the market, $43 billion in trading. Mm -hmm. Oh um, shit. Right? So even if 50% of that is wash traded, it's still by far the highest volume. Yeah. Cardano and Polygon are a match second for wash trading at 15%. And considering Cardano doesn't even have a billion dollars and you know, we're also high and righteous. <laughs> we're the second most uh, wash traded essentially blockchain uh, that matters or no like the top 25 blockchains that have NFTs 
Uh, and I think that's pretty much it. Like, I don't think anyone else is really doing. Maybe V Chain is, but they're not on this list. But I doubt mm-hmm. that they would have more. Uh, yeah, more watch trading than that. But that's concerning, right? Absolutely. So for us as a upsetting for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And which is, you know, end of the day, like, yeah, sure, okay. Uh, Polygon doesn't have like huge community and stuff, but they have awesome um, sort of backend integrations with real world products. Uh, so like the Reddits and, and and all that stuff, and they do a lot of their volume because of that. Um, and we're still doing more volume there. So people resonate more with this idea for us there. So overall, the reason I just wanted to kind of explain all of this is <clears throat> there are a lot of amazing people on Cardano. Our core community is on Cardano. <clears throat> but a lot of people have left Cardano as a whole. You're looking at like massive, massive whales who were, you know, buying hundreds of NFTs are now Solana meme coining. And I literally had somebody who had one of ones on like multiple top projects. And I was chatting to him the other day and he's like, bro, I don't touch Cardano anymore. Uh, yeah. And I haven't in like six months. So look, I mean, we're going to keep building on the Cardano front, doesn't matter. But we've gotten to a point where we're not a blockchain project anymore. Uh, we're not, we haven't been an NFT project for a while. Now it's about how do we take what we've created in the blockchain world to benefit our holders and get out into the masses. And that's it. That is absolutely it. So Mm -hmm. if we, if we can take these plushies, the, the way that we're going to get these plushies into Walmart, uh, the way that we have a conversation with Walmart, Costco target is essentially by selling as many of the plushies as possible, right? Simple as that. If we don't uh, have, you know, if we don't get the sort of numbers they want, then we still get the opportunity to talk to multiple smaller specialty retailers. Uh, So it's not like, you know, we're going to have to do really badly after having signed this whole agreement and not get these toys into retail. But our goal Mm -hmm. is Walmart, Target, Costco. Um, We don't even have Walmart in America, in Australia, right? Uh, But it it flows through um, to the main retailers here. Um, Yeah, Yeah. Uh, you know, you now get Pudgies in in obviously uh, the US, Canada, but then also the UK, Australia, New Zealand, uh, all of that. So the only way is like support us, you know, buy, buy a dank each one, buy like Bobo comes with a mintable NFT on the Cardano front. There'll be a QR code. Uh, you go in, you'll get like an end maker wallet pop up. Uh, you don't need to do anything. You don't need to own a wallet, right, awesome. a wallet. You click mint. We're going to pay for the fees, uh, to ha- get that minted. So when you buy the toy, you don't actually pay anything. Yeah. Uh, same thing with Shroomy, but on the Polygon front, uh, you'll get a Shroomy NFT. Both of those are being uh, made by Victor at the moment. So he's almost cool. done with that art. Uh, it's going to be pretty, pretty sick. We've got a couple oh. of other exciting things to announce in relation to the toys and the packaging and blah, blah, blah. That mm-hmm. will drop soon. Um, we've got another really big partnership. Um, that Cardano Foundations helped us secure in relation to these toys, which which I think is going to be really, really big. Yeah. So there's a few things coming through. Look, I mean, you know, um, you want to get gifts for your own children, your nieces, nephews, your, uh, you know, your best mates, kids, whatever it is. Uh, why not support in-house? Let's get, you know, let's get Cardano let's get Polygon into Walmart because the amount of onboarding opportunity is second to none. Pudgy Penguins yeah. actually doesn't give you a blockchain digital experience with their toys. We are going to do that. So that's right. the biggest difference. When you get a Pudgy, you scan their QR code. You don't go 
into Ethereum and start playing their game on ETH, uh, you just get like a Web2 metaverse that allows you to play like five or six games. That's it. Uh, so hmm. thank you for the monologue, everyone. Uh, hope yeah. you enjoy the rest of the Freedom 35 er show. Ah, and- <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's a lot to take in. There's a lot uh, of truth, though. It all makes sense. It's yeah. all very much based in logic. Like, hey, this is pretty, pretty clear, like how we can be successful. Um, I like that you're looking at it that way, too. I think some projects seem to just kind of be like, yeah, we just enjoy chilling. We got, you know, our NFTs are out there and we make some money on secondary and uh, you got a cool Discord. You want to come and like post memes? We just <laughs> hang out and, and post funny things and then get in arguments all day on Twitter. Um, it's cool that you're kind of looking at this as a different way. Like you said, you're not really in the NFT side. You're in this, in, in your brand. Um, and then in, by doing so, bringing back to the people that did buy the NFT. So, you know, it really is uh, making sure everything kind of comes full circle. Yeah, yeah. I, I do the community's uh, arguments. I, I do them all myself on Twitter. I don't let them have to worry do, about do it. Zusan likes to go in the fire a little bit and, and play around. I've seen that before over on the timeline, which is fun, though. Like, sometimes you need to... I I, I, I love the entertainment over there, um, although a lot of it is just pointless to get engaged with. But, man, I, I mean, to, like, throw that back also real quick. I hear, sorry, there's our favorite one-on-one one over there hanging out in chat. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, AJ? Uh, I got a quick, good, quick little question too from Dr. Wolf. He said, "How do you find Zug and all this project man- management stuff with keeping up with the demands of starting a young family?" Yeah, Wolves is a legend. Uh, mm-hmm. I know that he's got a young family as well. Um, and look, it's not easy, right? You got to sacrifice a lot of things. I'm not gonna uh, hide that, you know, under the rug. Uh, unfortunately, we're not. We can't sell rugs anymore, by the way, because uh, they're not. Yeah, we're not allowed to sell those rugs, guys, because uh, we're exclusive license now, ah. uh, and those rugs were coming through from our friends at Club Mars. But hey, uh, ah. we can still give them out for free. Uh, but uh, look, uh, Wolves, great question, mate. And and look, very honestly, uh, there are things that that have to be sacrificed. But there's one thing that I don't compromise on, and that's time with my son. Uh, I work from home. I've been working from home completely. I completely went full time in Web3 um, in January 23, right? Oh, nice. Uh, And that was just a few days. Like, my son was born in January 23 as well. I remember, Uh, yeah. And I've gotten to spend every single day with him uh, of his life, right? Barring like one or two where I was traveling or something. But that's more than I think most people get. And I'm super grateful for that. And what I what I make sure of is no matter what happens, you know, I, I do like 30 to 40, 30 hours of, of Zoom calls uh, or Google Meet calls a week. Um, mm-hmm. And then the re- like another 40 hours of working on, on stuff. Then Ketsu and now also Tokyo. Um, so the both of them combined, I make sure that I can get three to four hours in a day, whether that means I have to cut down on my sleep, uh, whether that means that I don't go for a swim that day, uh, as I usually do on a regular basis, so I can be with my son. Um, and, and that's the very simple part of it. Yes, it would be great if I did a nine to five and then I came home and I had the whole evening with my kid uh but i'm not gonna lie when i was doing nine to fives you get pretty tired after that whereas here you know i've got a couple of phone calls after the stream uh and then i get done at what is 3 p.m australia time then i'm gonna spend like three four hours with my son put him to bed and then get back to work so Mm -hmm. and i'm not tired yet so i think it's scheduling is the games schedule 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 put everything in your calendar and honestly for me that that always always works nice some good words right there man it's good it's good to hear um i i would love love that opportunity the i think i'm know, ready i'm just gonna do it i'm just gonna go rogue mm-hmm. uh just give it a shot yeah hey just everybody I mean, revenue will blessing. cover it right you guys you can pay our rent yeah, that's a blessing, though, to be able to do that, man. So that's good advice. Yeah, that's I agree. Is. Scheduling time management is a huge thing. You can get a lot done if you schedule it properly, even if you have a busy nine to five or whatever it may be. Um, it's a lot of just discipline. 
that's really what it is but good to see 100%. that you're able to balance that man um big congrats to you on that um yeah i remember last time when we we had you on i think last year we you missed out on one of the streams because you uh i think your son was just about to be born i think we had to the other tommy uh subbing in for that time that's but right. uh <laughs> yeah yeah he's got a son now as well nice look at that yeah. man everybody's growing up together it's, <laughs> it's, it's it's crazy man and all the kids are gonna grow up and get to use these fun things their parents are creating out here right <laughs> should be the dope yeah we know we love to see uh like you said the uh the, the concepts the plushies so will people be able to get their hands on bobo and shroomy anytime soon yeah so we're we're looking uh, uh six to eight weeks from now is okay. wow is what's yeah what's going on behind the scenes at the moment is uh we're waiting for the sample to come through mm -hmm. uh so their factories are in china they're gonna get like two of the toys delivered to north america and then two of the toys delivered over to us in australia mm -hmm. both parties happy with the stitching the manufacturing mm -hmm. uh and then it's a go and then from there we ramp up announcements promotion uh they do by the way they do everything right so they do they did the 3d modeling with us they did them uh they're doing the um manufacturing the distribution shipping Right. And they also create the website for us, like the store. Mm -hmm. And the store will accept Adamatic payments and then ETH, uh, BTC, and then one of the stable coins, and then Fiat. So oh, if you think about it that huge. way, you know, the toys will be 25 to 30 bucks. It's cheaper than most mints, like, yeah. you know, yeah. 70, a little bit more than the Cardano Maxi Biz. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, mint, maybe like 60, 70, uh, ADA. Uh, yeah. so they're pretty cheap and you get a free NFT with each of them. We might also be throwing in like a free t-shirt if you buy, uh, one of both. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's some other really cool things that are going to come, uh, digitally that will be there along with the toys. That's the alpha I'll drop. There you go. I love that right there. And I'm, I'm looking forward to get a uh, chance over there to to get get my hands on one. I don't know if you see the background over here, but we got some yummies, we got some derplings. I'd love to add uh, a shroomy, especially after having one of those NFTs over on the wall there. Uh, do a little unboxing video or something like that. It'd be fun. Yeah, yeah we're man. gonna we'll send one over uh, to each of you, uh, whichever oh. of the two you want. But interesting thing, mate. Um, when I was when we were doing the 3D modeling, mm -hmm. uh, I remembered your background. Yeah. And they were like, what size do you want it to be? Because the pudgy penguins are like about that big. Yeah. Yeah. Right, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I was like, but like I've seen uh, Tommy's background uh, mm -hmm. on the show and like the toys are smaller because they fit with, uh, within like the screen uh, yeah. or the camera shot. So I was like, it's almost going to be a little bit bigger than the palm of your hand. So yeah. it's like, it's like that big. So that was the reference for me. When we were determining <laughs> the size of the toy, yeah, that's <laughs> that's actually, yeah, yeah, that's good to know because if you see back there, that I think the original concept, uh, yummy, that was out there, that was the first one they ever did. And if you look at it, it's like barely fitting in that little shelf. But they went ahead and they they also kind of narrowed that down. And like you said, it's just a little bit bigger than the palm of your hand, um, so it works out perfectly for sizing. That's funny though. <laughs> that's a great little story right there. Um, but they're great, man. Like you said, for kids, they don't need to know that they're NFTs or anything like that. Like, right, they're a fun, cute character. It's part of a brand that they're building. They can get to know it more, right? Like, you guys have some great lore, uh, your mangas. And then on top of that, like, the comics you guys are said you're trying to get into, eventually maybe an anime long term. Like, who knows where you guys could go from here? This is like the stepping stone to getting to more, way more people out here. I think that's what you want, right, as a brand to, to kind of grow, right? You don't want to just stay, like, in one lane. You want to be able to like expand and, and get other people involved like most people in like the casual market don't care too much about the nfts they want nothing to do with it or it's like an unattractive buzzword that they don't want anything to do with yep um you introduce that over there i'm like all right like okay what is that like now like even my wife she's like oh that's the yummy that's the derp i understand what you know i get them now like i can tangibly see them uh and it's, it's a different kind of connection you know but uh Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, look at my man over here. He said, look at a little alpha for the show. Keep a lookout for Adventures of Shroomy coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> you can't wait to, get, uh, to, to pump out some content over there for that, huh? I bet that's exciting as hell. Yeah, it's probably a lot of fun, too. 
Oh yeah, yeah, right. If people are buying that, and I, I mean, obviously, I don't know what kind of percentages you guys are working out with them, but either way, I mean, if that ever takes off, you know, you're sitting pretty over there. Yeah, I mean, and and, and the beauty of of him starting something like Adventures of Shumi is um, we wouldn't make any money off of that. Uh, it would all go to him anyway yeah. until it hits like two hundred and fifty thousand USD per annum. And then we have a conversation. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, All right, buddy, come on, let's go back. <laughs> you're you're, you're making it agreement. enough, you know. <laughs> uh, but isn't that crazy though, too? Because he could really, like, like you said, what if he went went out and did his own social media thing? If he became like a YouTuber, whatever it is, and really grew that brand outside of that, even in what in just like regular world, and that brand grew big, and uh, he was licensing that IP from you guys. Like, how cool is that? Where it's like a, it can become like a, you both can benefit each other in that sense. It's not just like, hey, they created something. I'm kind of like working off of it. It's like, no, we're you can if you market it well, we both could potentially do well. You know, it gives them exactly, the opportunity. Yeah. yeah, and and like right at this moment, we have a community member who's about to release his own Denketsu manga. Mm -hmm. uh, we have another community member that's been sitting on like a sort of. Um, uh, card game that he built a while ago and yeah. he just finally got around to finishing the designs um, nice. so there's a bunch of people we've already had a manga that's released um, in the past uh, by the community mm -hmm. uh, like their own manga so there's a lot of this stuff that the community has already been doing and I think we're going to see a lot more of it uh, with all of this right because who who doesn't want to utilize the success for more success essentially right right if, if they see denketsu you know gets into walmart and i say it this way because you know i i really think i believe that we can and i think that we're so 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 close to making it happen um that then they go well denketsu's in walmart i can now take my danks and do X, Y, Z with them and it's going to work, right? People still go to that board Ape Yacht Club burger joint uh, and eat there and yeah. it's doing pretty decently. So there are a lot of opportunities. I just think pretty that fun. the people that own Danketsu NFTs are a lot more like on the creative side than the entrepreneurial side. But then we are also in Web3, so there's definitely some uh, entrepreneurial elements within all of us, right? So. 100%. Um, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be exciting. We'll, we'll get the. Uh, they do a photo shoot of the toys as well, which will be getting done as soon as we're happy with the samples. So we're hoping those samples come through within the next two weeks. Yeah, dude, I love like can't wait to see that. Uh, it's it's really exciting though. Outside of just the uh, you know the announcement of like, hey, we got some like merch. It's like no, we've got like a licensing deal here potentially to grow this into Jeez. these major major retailers, which. That alone is like just the eye, uh, getting that kind of like those kind of eyes on your project. And if you guys are successful, if, if like you were talking about, if we really want this to grow, like the community can kind of surround behind you guys, surround and support. And then that in turn gets, you know, them to go ahead and say, okay, let's go ahead and get you guys in there. In turn helps grow the community that we're a part of. And then who knows where it branches out from there over here. But there's a way to, to support it. Even if you guys are like, hey, Dan Ketchy's not my favorite, but hey, I, I love to see bigger exposure, less support and rally behind them, you know, because they've got well, an opportunity. A, uh, a great point, Tommy, is something that we've talked about before, uh, where, you know, anyone can do merch. I mean, if we wanted to, I mean, we, we put up shirts before no one was like super interested in buying them necessarily. But but if we wanted to actually make physical merch, too, uh, it's you know anyone's capable of putting the money up as long as you can pay for it yourself um but so we see so many projects that i think just kind of run to that where they're like hey now we have a company and we did a mint so we have some money uh, wouldn't it be cool if we had merch because that's what you do next we'll make shirts and t-shirts or something um and then no one ever really buys it nothing ever happens and then you know are those projects still around so there's just so many that use their they just think like hey because i have a logo now we should make certain merch uh that doesn't even maybe have like is anyone gonna wear this does anyone care um does anyone know who you are yet or did anyone buy you besides a flip um there's just so many projects like that and you guys have been here long enough to play this out right uh to uh make something of it uh hopefully you here which is awesome um, it actually gets me excited as opposed to just like oh just more stuff to buy related to nfts mm -hmm. uh, 
is because so many projects do that, but then they don't ever actually have any kind of promise to do anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's 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 a very interesting point that you raised there, Tom. Um, I don't I don't know how familiar you guys are with like uh, professional wrestling and kayfabe, uh, but kayfabe is like a really cool storytelling element where the fans kind of agree with the wrestler that this is a show uh and and you know it's it's the only thing people know about professional wrestling is like the wwe right okay. and the WWE, and now they've been bought by the ufc uh the rock is like a co-owner and it's they're gonna be starting like a new show uh weekly on netflix so they're they're like it's like the biggest time since the 90s for uh wrestling and i and i was a fan growing up and now i follow it from like a business point of view quite uh yeah. in detail to kind of go like why do people still watch uh fake uh fighting right it's not when fake they... <laughs> don't call steve also the rock that was real yeah well i mean the blood was real right the, the blood was at least the blood was real um but how does um you know there's another, like everyone just knows the WWE, nothing else. There's another like random smaller wrestling promotion called uh, Ring of Honor. Uh, and the Ring of Honor guys did this really cool thing with their merch uh, where there was one sort of big group, wrestling group that they made. Mm -hmm. And these guys dropped a merch line and people did not even know what the, sh what the clothing was about, but they actually flipped WWE merch in sales and were in like the top five clothing brands for a couple of months just because mm, they had wild. this super cool vibe to the clothing and it kind of got into like the hands of like you know the supreme heads and stuff and they I don't even I don't I don't even know what it's called but I was looking at that as a case study and it was just really really interesting right where if you're able to market it well enough if you're able to uh create it in a way that it doesn't necessarily matter um whether the person knows what it is or it isn't and then the third thing is if you can get the existing fans and leverage them to sort of take it to the next level you can get like a a company that does like you know five percent of uh, or ten percent of the profit that WWE does, and yeah. get up there into like the the same level of shirt sales as Supreme. So um, you know the stories are there. It's it's just about really sort of assessing them as case studies and kind of learning uh, from there. Yeah, hundred percent. I think uh, <laughs> I, I was just looking up kayfabe over on the. Uh, the side right there i'm like oh shit, that's actually a real thing over there i didn't like but i would have no clue the people that do like you said it, it can surprise people sometimes when like well where does sales come from what, what's going on in that community why is there so much hype uh you know it gets you to think about it a little bit more and maybe go investigate um but man i now, saw a I, video the day of kayfabe with the rocket what's his name cody something he yeah. did a little skit and it, it looked real to me i mean it, it was he, the he sold it well I saw. It was the coolest thing in wrestling I saw since I was like eight years old. So, hundred <laughs> percent, it, it drew me, and I watched the entire thing. I was like, "Wow, that's pretty." I kind of want to see the fight now. <laughs> dude, if you haven't cool watched the clip, right it's now. pretty good, honestly. No, I'll just send it to me afterwards, dude. That's funny, but no, man. Like, I, I love that you guys have have taken it this far. Uh, you know, like I think the first time we chatted with you guys, I don't know if it was officially in 2021 or right in the beginning of 22. Um, but it's been a while. It's cool to see you guys' journey from starting out as Aiden Ninjas to getting to where you're at today um, over here. And big shout out to you for also just, you know, being a supporter over here as well. You know, I see you in streams and stuff like that. And I think that's a big thing for us to do what we do uh, for as long as we have and see, you know, the support back, especially from founders and people growing the community. Like, it doesn't work if we don't all support each other in some sort of way. And you don't have to like everybody. You don't have to agree with everything they do, but if you know you see success over there, like celebrate that success, even if it's not your project or your bag 100%. holding it, you know, because that's how how we get the word out to other people and people at least get interested in it. You don't need everybody to buy hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of this stuff over here, but if everybody just got one, you know, or got involved with it somehow, it can grow very, very quickly. Or just as simple you know? as just reposting a tweet. 
You know what I mean? It's something yeah. simple as that. Just show your support that way, just because how people will get more eyes on it. The next person retweets, the next person retweets, that just more and more people are looking at it. You didn't have to buy anything, but you supported in that way mm -hmm. by just clicking one button. Yep. Yeah. Just like you can hit that like button right now down there. <laughs> uh, great plug. Yeah. Yeah, hey, I can plug it over here. It's been rough over also, here on. It's been rough on the YouTube side, man. It's just like you you put Cardano in a tease in the word, and the views just don't come anymore. But <laughs> you know what? First, put Solana in there. See what happens. Yeah, if Solana next hundred X meme coin, we're gonna put that in a tag. Of Laser video. eyes. <laughs> I think what you need, guys, is you need this guy to show up. Well, he doesn't actually make an appearance on the screen. Uh -huh. but he's got all the top projects coming, and it starts off with. It's your boy, eight hey, crypto. Coming in from Plant Australia. Uh, let me show you the next thousand X Cardano coin. Oh my boys. gosh. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Yo, that's you do that way too well. Oh <laughs> that is uh, your secret alias behind there. That's how they got started. <laughs> well, I, I, do appear, I used to appear as him in, in, in Discord chats, right? I, I remember I remember <laughs> over there. I remember in TGT. Uh shout out to them back. <laughs> Today. I did Man, it in I, some like um like you remember when we had like all the spicy and, and all those mid the oh, yeah. Uh -huh. and, yeah 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 I don't hear anymore yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was I was eight crypto in all of them right? <laughs> that's funny <laughs> people started DMing me people started swearing at me Bro. give me back my nerds and virgins money <laughs> Uh, those uh, they, they can hang terrible. out with JPEG junkies over there. Terrible, man. <laughs> <laughs> man it's fun. Huh? That's fun that you've been around that long that we can remember yeah, the original OG. Bo I'm waiting for him to come back uh, here, and you know, maybe in another year we get the OG like next thousand X. Uh, I said if anybody ever puts a thousand X on an NFT prize like a Cardano, you know, uh, we're coming after you guys, <laughs> <laughs> calling you out <laughs> in the comments. Maybe we need to try that tactic. I don't know. We'll see, but. Hey, we keep it real over here, and we, uh, if anything, get a spotlight, get to talk to some cool people like you guys. So I appreciate you showing up over here, man. Now, likewise, and and look, guys, I mean, I have to, you know, give you guys a big, big, big shout out as well. I mean, you've been uh, kind enough to have us on uh, so many times over the last couple of years, and and you know, I think the the beauty of of what you guys do with this, uh, you know, weekly uh, show is that it. For me, it's always like, it's like a, I get like a homely feeling. It's just mm. like, oh man, yeah, I'm going to catch up with the guys. It's going to be so much fun. Yeah. And I think a lot of people resonate with that as well. Cause you're just chilling and talking about what everyone's doing that week mm. uh, within the space, what everyone's hearing about. And yeah. um, to all the Dank fam that's watching, you know, give the Freedom 35ers a follow, subscribe, uh, leave a Appreciate comment, that. join their discord all that jazz uh make it happen you know come by for the the show for me it's perfect because it starts at like um 12 p.m for me uh Crazy. so that's why i can tune in as well yeah. uh, get a little and, lunch and watch the show whereas most of the stuff unfortunately with time zones it's like 4 a.m here when you guys yeah. are doing stuff in america yeah yeah, well, you guys live in the future, so it's it's tough. It's a trade off, right? <laughs> <laughs> we always no, do we that. We have a uh, yeah, dude. Yeah, absolutely. That's no, literally the vibe we're going for. Just like a chill hangout with some friends talking NFTs and crypto. That's literally the vibe we wanted everyone to feel when they come on the show and chat with us, and even in our chat. Yeah, just hanging yeah. out. No, nah, okay. no, nah, for sure. Because like, I don't do most Twitter Spaces uh, on a regular basis. I cannot. I do calm Dano. Calm Dano is like one because it's yeah. super mature uh, and they're just talking about stuff at a very serious level. But <clears throat> most of the spaces I cannot do. It's just like shout fest. <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> hey, I mean, there's different, like you said, there's different channels for everybody. It's just like there's different meme coins and there's different DJ hours, whatever it is that you want to talk about. Um, yeah, like I said, my time, I don't have a lot of free time. So in the free time that we do, you know, we try to spend it productive or at least like just catching up. Having my favorite thing about doing this too is like tuning in on a weekly thing is just getting to catch up with the community, man. Like that's what we always originally started with because we were part of it and just getting a chance to connect with others. And then on top of that, getting to talk with founders. It's, it's been a cool, cool journey for us. And if anything, maybe it's a time capsule for some people when this uh, thing over here on Cardano starts to take off, they can go back and look at some of this stuff and see the evolution 
uh, through some of these if they ever, if, if, if ever want to go back, you know. But if anything, we've had a great time getting to know you guys and uh, seeing your 100%. growth. And hey, when I see that streamer or that Bobo over in Walmart, uh, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to tweet that at you guys. Be like, look, we're buying them right now. No. <laughs> <laughs> Our kids will go ahead and uh, get some of that stuff. And we can say we talked to the founders on them, right? And they'll be like, I, I don't no. care. No, I don't care. I just buy, buy, buy yeah. the both. Buy anymore? No. Buy, buy them all. Happy meal, Dad. Is he going to give them some, us some for free? <laughs> no? Okay, we'll buy it. Uh -huh. Shut up, clown. <laughs> <laughs> No, man. But yeah, appreciate everybody also showing up in chat. AJ, thanks for popping in. He heard uh, he heard it subconsciously. He heard Shroomy, one of one. They're talking about me. Let's go. 3.30 a.m. There's no time for sleep. Uh, we're over here getting bullish over there. But no, man, it's it's always cool. I like, can see the community and other people uh, tuning in, being a part of what you guys have built. And man, what, uh, what I want... Wow, whoa, did you just threw me? Is that the first video? I'm just sitting here looking. I at just the looked at it too. It threw me for a loop. I'm watching it now. That's wild. Uh, dude, <laughs> I was pulling, I'm going to pull that up over here. Real Hold quick up, because I was just clicking on it. Yeah, if you guys are not familiar, uh, I think this may be the first time. Yeah, this was the first time. It says two years. I don't think that's right. I think it's the. Is there a date on this? February 6, 2022. So, oh, yeah, we're. Hair hair Tom, is that. When you started growing your hair, because you stopped like cutting no, your hair it was, like, it was like long, right? Yeah. Okay, you did a great job behind that. Yeah, there, yeah. Zusha, man, you grew your hair a little bit longer. You had a nice clean cut back then. Look at you over there, man. I wasn't uh, a dad. I had. I was I had say I hundred percent the dad. Yeah, <laughs> dad cut, bro. I got you. I know. Yeah, you're about. <laughs> bro, we're over here with our little backgrounds. Our Ada moons evolved uh, since then. Like we, we've got a whole new setup these days. Uh, but that's crazy, man. Yeah, February 6, 2022. So it's been over two years since the first time we've had you on the show, uh, which is crazy, man. So, so cool to see you guys grow and where you've gone from this, man. It's it's like a time, a time capsule going back on this stuff. Ah, so cool to see, man. I love that you linked that. That's dope. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, was like, I was like, let me. It's always easy because I'm like, I just have to type whatever I'm talking about with eight and ninjas because that's the. Name yeah, right. That's not used anymore, so I don't need to scroll anywhere and try to find it. And I was yeah, like, you put that on YouTube, is. and you're only getting a few hits uh, over there <laughs> these days, right? That's so cool. Though. Even looking back at what you guys did back then, um, it's so it's cool so to far, see the. Yeah, it's yeah. Awesome you stuck with it. Yeah, I think a lot of people, like a lot of projects we've seen, just kind of run out of like ideas. Essentially, they're like, "Hey, we did the mint thing. We don't. What are we supposed to do now with this? Mm -hmm. I don't like we got money for it, but we'd rather just keep it. Um, that sounds cool to us. Um, so the fact <laughs> you've stayed in it this long is awesome. Yeah. How long? So, sorry, Tom. I wanted to ask, how long was your hair in that video? Uh, probably just as long. I keep it about the same length now. No way. Yeah, I would not have even known until. Well, yeah, like, I'll trim off the end. Yeah. I'll be oh, honest yeah. with you. We've known Tom what twenty something years these year, and and Tom over here. I couldn't tell you that he had his hair like that until I think the first time we went out, like Miami, went to our Basel, and I was like, "Dude, how long is your hair right now?" He just threw it out there. Yeah, we didn't even know like, either. Like, it was probably we would hang out. Like, it was like yeah. gaming. We're not seeing yeah. each other, so when we saw him even like recording, like it would just it was pulled back. Yeah, it's a great job of hiding that thing. But dude, uh, you gotta let it go old Afro style one of these days. When we met Tom, that thing was like a, out here. I can't do that. What do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't work that get way. Get a perm. Get a perm. You guys, the show. If the show pays for the perm, I'll do it. There you go. We'll make a Tom plushie with the What's prisoner style? shirt and uh, the Afro hair. <laughs> There's your IP right there. there F35 IP. Um, <laughs> now, as we shot, we appreciate you uh, jumping onto the stream tonight. Absolutely. Also, everybody over in chat, uh, we say we always do these things like an hour, and then they always end up an hour and a half. Um, so it's always a fun time. Is there anything on the immediate future anybody needs to keep an eye out for, or uh, with you guys just over on the channels? Yeah, um, we've got a few announcements. Something to do with a Bobo NFT. Uh, dropping soon, uh, a big partnership that uh, we're sort of worked towards uh, with Gar the Cardano Foundation support, a couple of other really cool features uh, of things that will be dropping with the toys, and then of course the actual toy sale date, price, and everything itself. So all of that within uh, the month is going to come through. So keep an eye out, get those notifications going and then you know soon after that uh you probably see a bobo or shroomy behind tommy in the uh stream as well so that'll be awesome hey we're gonna show them off nice and proud right there we'll just 100%. give them a little spotlight next to the dirt bling or something right there 
Um, and then it, also, yeah. just a little alpha, or just a little reminder, keep an eye out over here for uh, Tokyo. Yeah. Also, <laughs> everything happening this month. Everything. Right. Yeah, yeah, Cross yeah. Cross-chain smart wallet for Cardano. Oof. That sounds interesting right Is that, there. So that'll be coming out this month then? Yeah, so we're just uh, uh, waiting um, waiting on on uh, uh, the approval for the App Store. Um, so, But what that's given us time to do is we've almost got the desktop version ready as well. Uh, oh, sick. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's wild. Um, once you get out into this world from like NFTs on Cardano, you're just like, man, there's a lot of money. And people want to throw money at things and and you know we've got like lots of small investors who come in and put money into this wallet like some of the if not the biggest businesses on cardano who put a little bit of money onto it uh and the devs have just done some insane work like this video doesn't even show half of what you will be able to do with this wallet but the idea is essentially Phantom makes it easy for people from Ethereum, Solana, and Polygon to switch around. Yeah. Why don't we have something like that on Cardano? But why don't we have a wallet on Cardano that lets you do everything from within the wallet? And I know that's all I'll say because I want to. Uh, maybe I'll share with you. Good ideas, ideas. Yeah. You get some more alpha uh, earlier, uh, but I want to keep it kind of closed doors at the moment. Yeah. Okay. No. No worries. I like the little teaser at the end there. Keep an eye on that too. I love the the ninja type theme right there. I don't know. It kind of looks like a little Bobo uh, in my mind right there. So, hey, something to think about, right? Dude, uh, appreciate you jumping onto the show, everybody. If you guys have not already, make sure to hit that like button down in the description. If you enjoyed the content and you want to see us every week, you can hit that subscribe button and get notifications on. If you guys want to check out Danketsu and all they're doing, make sure to go join their Discord. Links are down in the description. Uh, head over to the website. Keep an eye on their Twitter. They got all kinds of things going on. Too much for me to even keep up with or even announce to you guys right now because I've already forgot them all because there's so much. Uh, but I know they got a lot in the mix. And Zushan, good friend of the show. Appreciate you sh uh, stopping on with us tonight. Always. We look forward to catching up with you guys later in the week. I think Friday I will be out uh, this week over on a business trip, taking a little sick day, aka work day on Wednesday. You got Tom and TJ later in the week. Another one. Another yeah, one. No, another yeah, one. Yeah, the work one. So uh, Ooh, we'll catch you guys on Friday over on 9 a.m. Eastern and have a good week, guys. Peace.